Okay, first the intro. Long time no see. Well, I had better things to do last couple of months and I have hit some creative hmm, wall again, but I decided to make another Figma tutorial. I know I said I will not go into design topics anymore because it was a huge disappointment for me. However, a while ago I asked a bunch of designers and creatives on Posts app whether they're interested into learning how to do Figma plugins and actually quite a lot of people was really excited about it and it seems that all of these people they don't know where to start. So take this video as as an overview and a little practice, especially if you know how to code, how to actually make Figma plugin, because making Figma plugins is not a linear knowledge. Like you start here and then boom, you have a plugin. It's actually a lot of different knowledges that you need to have in order to make a Figma plugin. So first things first, if you know how to code with JavaScript, you can make your Figma plugin today. So that's separate knowledge apart from Figma has nothing to do with designing. So you need to know how to use JavaScript and also HTML and CSS and you know, the whole front end stack. So if you are a complete beginner, first, forget about Figma, forget about plugins, go to YouTube, go to Udemy, find some website that works for you and learn a little bit of coding. It's not that hard. I promise you, I learned everything I know by myself. Nobody ever helped me. So if I did it, I guess you can do as well. It's really not that hard. And also I will try to maybe, you know, explain you how to code in a couple of videos, but I don't want to embarrass myself because I'm not a professional. So let's see about that. Anywho, moving to Figma, Figma is a tool that has API. If you don't know what API is, it's basically pre-made code that you can access that Figma people made for you. So you can manipulate elements in your Figma interface. It's, it's a lot of different things that you need to know, but in this video, I just want to show you a little bit how you can start. If you never coded before, this will probably be very useless for you, but I still recommend stick to the end. Maybe, maybe something will, will, I don't know, click for you. If you know a little bit of code or how coding works, maybe this will be useful because it's going to show you how you can start today and make some simple utility, for example, plugin in your Figma. So what's the goal of today's video? Well, I have an idea how we can code a really simple plugin that will turn any text into ugly text. Well, the point of this video is to teach you how you can interact with Figma API. So we're going to detect selection and then we're going to use some funny looking font from Google fonts. That's basically it. It's like this little utility plugin that anybody can code, but it, it's, it's going to show you like some basics of making Figma plugins and how you can interact with Figma API. In future, I plan to like figure out some different, more or less stupid plugins that interact with different Figma options that you can use. So you can learn a little bit more. So it's not just, you know, you reading through documentation and scratching your head. So let's open Figma and start working on our plugin. You want to switch to development over here and there is a plus new plugin and you need to name it. So let's call it make super mega ugly text. We will choose Figma design because we will not use FigGem API today or maybe ever. And let's just use default. This is the simplest way to get it started and just save it wherever you save your code. And that's about it. You can see that here we can run our plugin. It's time to do some coding. I use VS code as my editor of choice. I recommend you do the same. It's super easy to use and widely uh, adored by developers wor worldwide. So yeah, you open your folder, whatever the name it is, and you will see like two files. First file that I want to talk about is manifest JSON. It's just a file that tells Figma stuff about plugin, like the name, ID, and some other properties. We will not go into details this time. This time, uh, the only thing that's really important to know is that every plugin needs to have a unique ID. So make sure that you are aware of that. And then in Code.js, well, this is that ma where magic happens. Not code. This is super simple plugin. We don't have interface, so we only have this one file where we code which is not the case always, but this is good for first time. So 
I prepared like one constant over here uh, that's called called green color. So it, this is basically a representation of really ugly neon green color. And next thing we want to do is we want to capture user's selection. So something needs to be selected. And why is that? Well, let me go a few steps back. Figma doesn't see like all the elements you put on canvas in the same way you see with your eyes. For us, it's, you know, rectangles, pixels everywhere, pictures and all of that. But Figma sees an array of nodes. So from now on, when you think of any entity, like a single entity, single element in your canvas, it's called a node. So I'm going to talk about nodes. And first we need to capture a user selection. So let's, let's write that. Let nodes, it's a bit tough to write with microphone in front of my face, but okay. So we are accessing Figma API right now. So with this code, Figma current page selection, uh, we will get whatever user selected. It can be one item or millions of items, but it will still be an array, which means we need to iterate over it. So I'm going to create one function over here. I will soon explain why we need to complicate things a little bit, but yeah, just stick with me and it's going to be clear later. Some asynchronous code means that multiple things are happening, but some are faster, some are slower, but whatever you want to do after, well, it needs to happen when all of these tasks are done, whether they're slow or fast, you just need to wait it out. And in order to avoid errors, you write async, but it's like a whole thing. Just bear with me. Process uh, nodes. So you, I mean, you can call this function however you want. Nodes will be a parameter and then we need to iterate. So we will use for off because this is a really good loop for asynchronous code. So we will make a constant node of nodes and let's stop for a bit and start console logging things. Let's, let's log whatever we have. Well, maybe we don't need to comment anything. This is fine. So what this code will do is it will iterate through our selection and we will so we will see how this actually looks in Figma. And then what we want to do is actually call this function plugin, run it. We don't have a way to cl close the plugin. So it has a like manual cancel button over here, but Figma expects you to close your plugin where it's supposed to be done. So don't forget about that. That's one important nugget of knowledge for you to like retain, but yeah. I am console logging whatever we are selecting. So yeah, two text elements and one rectangle. And that's correct. Like we have these things over here. Let me pull this a little bit up. As you can see, these text nodes, they have a lot of properties over here, like really tons. You can do really crazy stuff with it. Not everything is like mutable, changeable. Something is just read only, but you get the idea. Like there, there is a lot of stuff happening with a text node. This is how Figma sees your, your text over here. And then rectangle, it looks very similar, right? Doesn't have font, text node has font. To, to make this easier to compare, I'm gonna cancel this and I'm gonna run a different plugin. It's called node inspector. It's a plugin to, to help you make plugins. So. Okay, so this is my selection and I'm going to search font. As you can see, there is such thing called font size, font name, font weight, weight. And in font name, it's, it's an object and it has two things. And if I click on rectangle, there is nothing that's even starting with font or contains font. Only text elements have font. And we will use this logic to determine if an element is actually a text that's, that's important. No, because we can't change font for a rectangle, right? So let's go back to code editor. Well, now that I think about it, I will actually use a second option, how to detect if some node is off type, because I think that's more useful knowledge for you. So you want to check if, if a node if, is of a certain type, text, rectangle, whatever. So we're going to use node type because every node has a type and we will see if it's text. I know this by heart, but if you go to Figma API documentation website, you can see all other types you can uh, type over here. Okay, now we are checking if it's a text and to make sure that this works, let's actually console log node. 
once again so let's go to figma let's shut this down as you can see over here correct it's only one let's clean this a little bit let's select these two so i should have two lines of text node let's see if that happens it happens so it works but let's now select all three this is what i supposed to do in the first place it's still only these two so our logic works so let's go back to code we don't need this okay and this is like figma specific knowledge along with development that you need to have when you, whenever you're working with fonts in figma you need to first load them you can't just assign them for some reason you just need to follow along uh, you have documentation which explains this uh, in details but basically we just need to load some fonts so this is a function to do that and then Remember, fonts have a family. This is just a Google font that I found that looks like funny. And style, regular. You can put this bold if you want. I don't know, whatever style it's available on that font, it's fine. All right. And then now, now we loaded this particular font. Now we can actually use it. So now we need to access this node. We remember we have a lot of parameters and we remember this font name. So we're going to use basically this thing that should do it. And we want to change color as well. And to change color, it's not like, why is it doing this? I have caps lock. Never mind my mistake. So to change color, you can be like, you can write like node color equals green. No, it doesn't work like that. Every node has fills because it can be gradient, it can be picture, it can be uh, like solid color and whatnot. So you need to access the property of fields. And let's let's actually go back to Figma. Let's run node inspector and let's find fields. Okay, so this is a property of fields and what's inside? Aha, uh -huh, fields is an array. So you can have multiple fields because correct, you can add more fields and then you have more items over here we don't need that much so let's delete that so we have type is it visible what's opacity blending mode like this field has a lot of properties because if you click over here you can see that that color itself has a lot of things to work with so figma has to know all these things in order to produce this color so this is a word or two about fields so let's let's change it to that green that we have prepared so it's an array right so we we're gonna put in one object that is called that it doesn't have name it's just an object that has property of type and it's a, it's a solid and color will be green color is literally over here and you can't put some other format you, you need to do it in this format R G B. All right. So this should detect that the selected item is text. We are loading fonts. Then, you know, to be honest, this can totally be not in a loop, but it, okay. I'm, I'm digging a hole over here for myself. Let's just leave it here. This is not efficient code. Like you don't need to load fonts like every time, because if you select millions of nodes, this might actually be a little bit uh, slow. So you need to only load fonts one. So you may, might want to do this. And then we are changing this font name to, to this one because it's loaded. And then we change uh, fill to, to a solid and some RGB value, which will produce green color. The next thing we want to do is, well, basically test if this this actually works. Let's select both of these and run our code. And it works. Oh my God. This was so stressful. You don't even know. All right. Let's make this dark. Let's, let's make this super ugly. Black and green. This is exactly what we wanted and it works. Awesome. I will go back. No, actually, I just want to... Let's put, I don't know, whatever other font. And then if we select all three, the code should still work because we are checking that the text is actually text yeah it works awesome if we go a little bit back let's remove this rectangle we don't need that we need one last thing here and then we're done to to close the plugin figma will not even approve that we will write then and we're just gonna write run some code after this chunk of code is done figma so we are accessing figma api again figma 
close login and that's it so that should work if we go back to figma if we select these two and run our plugin there you go we don't have this toast over here this widget that allows us to cancel the plugin. This is something that would get approved because it works. And that's pretty much it. Now you might wonder, okay, but how do I share this with everybody? I want to publish my plugin. This is something for next videos. I can't reveal everything in this one. I hope you learned at least a little bit, a little bit about Figma plugins. Let me know, seriously, let me know which, which topics and be specific what what bugs you what's unclear what is a big unknown for you where do you want to start so i can start exploring different topics with you is it coding well i'm not a professional coder i mean i barely do something myself I, of course i understand a lot but i'm not professional developer i will embarrass my ass if i start explaining but if you really really want if i get a lot of people that will say oh please explain like some basics of codings uh, coding i will try I can promise you that I can try. And yeah, if you have some ideas, like what would you want to do in Figma and you are not sure how to do it, let me know. And then maybe I can figure out a tutorial to explore how to use third party APIs to, I don't know, make a weather app inside Figma for some reason. That's it for today. If you want more design content, check my podcast design party until next time. Just keep.